Well, the uh, new Coen Brothers movie, it's called Hail Caesar, is like a lot of their movies in that it's um, very quirky, it's very unpredictable, it's funny, it's strange, all of that. Uh, I'm a big fan of the Coen Brothers. I think they're the most spiritually alert filmmakers uh, working today. This movie is about um, the kind of Hollywood studio system back in the 1950s, and it both extols and celebrates that system, and it mocks it, it parodies it. But is it always the case in Coen Brothers movies? Something deeper, too, is going on. What jumped right out at me, as the movie begins, the very first thing you see is a big statue of the crucified Jesus. And so, so presiding, as it were, over the whole movie is Jesus. Well, then the camera moves down to a confessional, and we hear a man uh, making a very sincere, a little bit obsessive, it appears he goes to confession almost every day, but a very sincere confession. We discover this man who is confessing is um, Eddie Mannix. Now, Eddie Mannix is based on a real um, character from Hollywood history. He was head of production at one of the major studios, and he functioned essentially as a fixer. So that's what we see now as the movie unfolds, is Eddie Mannix kind of frantically fixing situations that his uh, stars have gotten into and directors and producers and various people with the studio. So the major plot motif uh, deals with uh, an actor played by George Clooney. The actor's name is Bear Whitlock. And he's a bit like Clooney himself. He's like a major Hollywood star. And he's in a movie that's sort of a, a blending of the robe and Ben-Hur. It's about a Roman officer who comes in contact with Christ. Well, anyway, uh, Bear Whitlock is kidnapped. And uh, the kidnappers demand $100,000. And so right away, Eddie Mannix, in his very efficient but quiet way, arranges for the money and the pickup and all of this. And so he, he fixes this central uh, problem. Another one deals with um, uh, an actress who's a bit like um, Esther Williams, you know, with the swimming pools and the diving and all this, played by Scarlett Johansson. And she gets in trouble because she's out of wedlock, but she has a, uh, she's pregnant. And um, Eddie Mannix comes to the scene, and he arranges with the lawyers and various people that she would adopt her own child, et cetera, et cetera. And so he fixes, he solves that uh, difficulty. There's a, uh, a young kid who's a very gifted sort of cowboy performer. and He makes popular movies where he's on horseback and doing all kinds of rope tricks and various things. Well, the top studio executives decide he should transition into more serious movies. And so, to my mind, the funniest part of the movie was when he's trying to make that transition, and he's driving the director, who's played beautifully by uh, Ray Fiennes, the wonderful British actor, um, driving him crazy and setting up all kinds of tensions. Well, Eddie Mannix comes in, and he, from to, to the cowboy, he's kind of solves his problem, and then he talks to the director and calms him down. He fixes the situation. Then the, uh, the wonderful British actress Tilda Swinton plays, uh, actually twins, two writers in Hollywood, but Eddie handles her because she's coming after, you know, the stars to get gossip and he, he you know, keeps her at bay, but at the same time feeds her some information to keep her happy and he, he calms the waters. So what we're seeing is this guy who is going about his work in a very efficient way, fixing things, helping people in this uh, Hollywood of the 1950s. Well, then we hear about a representative from the Lockheed Corporation who is offering Eddie Mannix a job. And they have a couple really comical um, uh, lunches. And the Lockheed fellow basically says to him, look, you know, you're a good guy, you're a competent guy, and you're, you're here with this crazy circus of people, and you spend your time trying to keep them out of trouble. And this is not a real job. You're dealing with this fantasy world of Hollywood. I want to give you a real job that's substantive and much more money and much better hours. And so he's tempted. And he actually discussed it with the priest and he, with his wife, and he goes back and forth uh, several times. But at the very end of the movie, we find him again in the confessional. And he's dealing with all these tensions, and he's dealing with this issue of the, of the job. And the priest speaks to him. And the priest is not a particularly impressive figure in the movie. But he plays the role of the old rabbi in the Coen Brothers movie, uh, The Serious Man. At the very end of that movie, this ancient rabbi, speaks a truth to this little kid who has been bar mitzvah. you got to find somebody to love, was his wisdom, which is very profound biblical wisdom. And the priest now, in his own kind of quiet, relatively unimpressive manner, speaks a truth. What he says to Eddie is, you have to do the right thing, because God wants you to do 
the right thing. And see, it's like the scales fall from his eyes because he realizes that yes, he's running a circus. Yes, he's dealing with crazy people all the time. Yes, he's, he's producing you know fantasies and all this business. But nevertheless, he's doing the right thing. He's doing what he was meant to do. Or he was doing what God wanted him to do. And with that, he gets this sort of new burst of confidence. He tells the secretary, call the lucky guy, tell him thanks but no thanks. And with a renewed sense of life, he goes back to his job. Now, I, I love the couple things I'll follow this. It's toward the very end of the movie. Clooney is now back from being kidnapped. I won't bore you with all the details. And he is spouting the doctrine of those who kidnapped him. They were communists. And so he's spouting all this kind of half-baked communist uh, dogma. And Eddie is having none of it. Normally, he would, he would probably mollify him. He'd try to see the, you know, the good side of it. He just frowns, and he gets up, pulls Clooney to his feet, slaps him several times, and says basically to him, go out there and be a movie star. In other words, be the person you were meant to be. Do the right thing with your life. Well, then we, we see Clooney going out now to film the, the kind of final climactic scene of this movie, Hail Caesar, this movie about the Christ. And he's there at the foot of the cross. He's, he's looking up at Jesus. Remember, the movie began with the cross of Jesus. Here now at the end, there's this actor. He delivers a, a wonderful speech that's moving everybody about, you know, the spiritual life and the purpose of life and what, what Jesus means and all this. And the speech is going beautifully until the very end. He said, and if only we could have... And he forgets the word. And cut, you know, the scene's over. And the word was faith. Someone tells them faith. Oh, faith, faith. So they all go back to their ordinary, you know, kind of attitudes and everything. They got to refilm the scene. But what, what struck me was that's the key, is, is Eddie Mannix realized, yeah, to do the thing that God wants me to do, that's what will make me happy. To do that, you got to have faith. That's, that's what you need, is faith, is, is a sense of God's purpose and activity in your life. Well, at this point, and with the Coen brothers, who are very alert sort of filmmakers, and you think everything has a significance, what's Eddie's name? His name is Mannix, right? He's a man. And go back into the like Yiddish tradition that the Coen brothers know very well. If someone's a mensch, that guy's a mensch. Mensch just means a, a human being, you know, in German or Yiddish. Um, that means he's a good guy. He's, he's a person of righteousness. He's an integral. He's a serious man from their earlier movie. A serious man was someone that, you know, was a mensch, that, that was spiritually alive. And so Eddie Mannix, who's a man, he's a mensch, is the kind of moral anchor of the movie. And I think it's through his eyes that we see what we're supposed to see. Most of us live kind of, you know, absurd lives. We deal with crazy people all the time. And our lives can look kind of insignificant. And, you know, couldn't things be better? And if you just made more money? No. No, no, be, be a mensch, be a man. Be someone who takes the will and purpose of God seriously. So that's what I got from this movie that begins and ends with the crucifixion of Jesus, that begins and ends with someone in the confessional coming to terms with the presence and purpose of God. 